Atlas Engineering Building Master Use Permit at uh, 1321 67th Street. And um, Terry, I think this is your item as well. Martin, um, uh, this is a public hearing on the Atlas Engineering Master Use How Permit. Second? It's consideration of a master use permit to allow various uses for an, an existing structure located in the IG zone. Um, as I mentioned earlier, this uh, uh, project actually is on the south side of 67th Street. I'll refer to the map here. Here you have 67th Street, here you have Hollis Street, and here you have project is categorically exempt from CEQA, again, under the rules that apply to minor alterations and the general rule that says there will be no possibility of a significant impact on the environment. Um, as mentioned, the uh, project involves... Here we go. As mentioned, the project involves uh, provision of a master use permit for an existing industrial building known as the Atlas Engineering Building. The uh, master use permit would allow a variety of uses to be placed in the building and thus increase the marketability of the building. The applicant states in his materials to the city that the uh, building has been vacant for approximately two years. The site is located in an area of light industrial uses with some vacant lots and commercial buildings in the immediate area. Uh, on the same site as the Atlas building, there are additional buildings that share the general parking area and I'll sh again sh indicate on the map where they are, there are several buildings, actually five on the site. There's a general parking area in here. There's an additional parking over on this side. And in fact, there's at this particular location, there's uh, a piece of uh, a parcel that is vacant that conceivably could be used for a parking at uh, some future date. Uh, the Atlas building is about 51,000 um, square feet. Um, the, uh, although the, uh, the building sits within a complex of the existing buildings, the application for the master use permit is for the Atlas building uh, alone. The building is about 125 feet wide, it's about 310 feet uh, long, and the first floor is largely devoted to warehouse space. There is a uh, second floor mezzanine level, which has some uh, office space uh, uh, associated with that. Um, the parking uh, for this project uh, uh, has been examined and uh, the uh, applicant has noted to the city that there are 92 parking spaces on the site, each of them measuring uh, 9 feet by 18 feet. Um, the applicant also notes that uh, as a result of this application, the parking on the property would remain unchanged. Um, I have uh, produced a, uh, a RATA sheet which deals with the parking calculations. I've passed this out to the commissioners and put the ex extra copies uh, on the table outside the, uh, the, 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 the chamber here. Essentially, it relates to the way uh, the parking is uh, um, configured in terms of the amount of industrial space and the amount of cons um, commercial space that uh, is allocated to the project. Uh, the net result of all of this is whilst there's uh, 92 parking spaces on the site, uh, the demand would be for 103 spaces. So at the present time, there's 11 uh, parking spaces which represent a shortfall uh, for the project at the present time. Um, there is also, as I had mentioned, the possibility of providing possibly 24 surface level uh, additional parking spaces on this vacant parcel that I uh, pointed out. And uh, with the use of tandem parking, that uh, uh, possibility of parking, the total number of parking there could increase to possibly 40. There's also the possibility that as uh, uses uh, are suggested for this building, that mechanical parking systems or tandem parking or, or even uh, valet parking could be introduced depending on the actual um, use that is planned for the space. So staff finds that the application for a change in use or occupancy of the, of the Atlas building uh, consistent with the approved master plan can be approved provided that additional on-site par on parking spaces are provided 
commensurate with the, the uh, proposed uses. Let me just uh, spend a couple of minutes uh, looking at the drawings. Um, this is the uh, ground floor of the Atlas building. The change in uh, calculation for industrial and commercial space is a result of a clarification that this portion of the building on the uh, corner of 67th and Hollis is in fact used as storage space, although from the division of the rooms there, you might expect that would be used as office space. I'm told by the applicant that in fact that is uh, storage, and so that results in the errata sheet calculations which have been presented. In terms of the second floor of the building, you have uh, a mezzanine space, again devoted to uh, office uses above. The building itself would not change as a result of this particular application. The uh, architect for the building has provided elevations for uh, all sides of the building. But again, this is for informational purposes. It, there are no particular physical changes to the building that would result as a, as a, as a, as a consequence of this, uh, of this application. There is also in the package a series of uh, photographs that illustrate the general condition and character of the buildings that surround the property at the present time. Again, I had mentioned earlier that I'd uh, um, put out a, a couple of uh, errata sheets. Um, the errata sheets deal with the calculation that I mentioned in terms of the parking. Also, later on, on staff uh, report page 5 and page 6, there are some additional changes to the uses that are permitted in the IG zone. Uh, for example, uh, the change that we made on page 5 was uh, under uh, item C, uh, right at the bottom of the page where it has commercial. Uh, there is a listing at the top of that uh, 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 list which says automotive and equipment. And we've indented the, the auto uh, rental um, aspect which was left out of your original staff report. On the following page, again under C at the bottom of the page, there again is indented the and enumerated some of the specific auto and equipment uses that would be applied to this particular project. And as a final, um, final change to the uh, materials before you, on the first page of the conditions of approval, again at the bottom of the page, there was um, a second sentence after C, which talks about the approval effectiveness and duration. The second sentence mentioned the fact that uh, the uh, approve improvements for this project would have to occur within, within one year. That uh, doesn't apply to this particular situation since it's a master use permit not involving construction activity at this time. So that brings me to the end of my report. And Any I questions? believe the uh, applicant is here to uh, take questions. I, before we hear from the applicant, I just wanted to ask you and Charlie, has the city done a similar um, MUP before? Well, we do have master occurs. use permits for various properties. Um, off the top of my head, the only ones I can think of are at the public market and at the Park Avenue Business Center down here on Park Avenue. I'm what about on Doyle? Didn't we have one there? Uh, you mean the uh, 5540 Doyle, the Sunrise Specialty property? There is an application for one there. Oh, okay. uh, you haven't approved that yet. That's what uh, the rezoning. Um, no questions? I, I have lots of questions. To Terry? Yeah. Okay. I guess, or to the applicant, whoever. Well, should uh, we hear from the applicant first and then? Well, maybe I should ask you. Okay. Now, we're being asked to grant somebody a use permit to have a whole bunch of uses that he presently doesn't have, and a building that's on a very, very prominent corner. It's taking up an entire block, and it's an eyesore as it is right now. And I don't see anywhere in the staff report any conditions for him to spruce up the building or to do anything with the outside, you know, mm -hmm. place the windows or do some, any, nothing. It's just, it's sort of like, what's in it for us? But the staff report does mention that um, if you, and, and it doesn't quite answer your point, but it does mention that if you have a building that's over 3,000 square feet and you're going to do tenant improvements to it, you have to bring it up to code in terms of, fire regulations and building code yeah, and the rest. Yeah, that's all But that, as I say, stuff. doesn't quite answer your point. Right. I think what would answer your point, and maybe Charlie would want to step in here, is that when a particular use comes along, let's say um, 
a furniture store or something of the like is then suggested for this location, it would have to be presented to the planning department. And the planning department at that time would take into consideration the elevations, the changes to the physical structure, coloration, signage, access to the building, things of uh, that nature that become specific when a specific project is introduced. Well, I would say you're right. We have not included any conditions that require uh, any changes, uh, improvements, if you will, to the exterior of the building. If the commission feels it's appropriate to do so, you can certainly add a condition to that effect. Uh, when the uh, individual uses come in, uh, my only authority would be to review them to make sure that they were consistent with the master use permit that you approved. Um, and I could administratively approve uh, changes that the applicant proposed to the exterior of the building, but I don't believe I could unilaterally require such changes. Well, Char Char oh, are you I have a question also. Um, the use in the, in the uh, table that breaks out square footage and, and parking requirements, um, it's calculated using commercial use and industrial uses as presented in the table. Now, with the uses that would be included uh, under the master use permit as a conditional use, would it come back to staff and planning commission if, for example, uh, the owner wants to do a retail use on the ground floor that's now <coughs> identified for industrial use? My point being that the parking requirements for a retail use are significantly greater than the parking requirements for an industrial use. Yes, that is c addressed in the conditions of approval, and in fact, that really is the key issue that we've been talking to the applicant about. Uh, somewhere in here it says that um, they have to meet the parking requirement at all times. And um, it also says that they need, there, there are, I think, a total of six buildings on this parcel, and this use permit is only for one of the six. Uh, we have calculated that provided the other five buildings remain in industrial use, they will require about 34 parking spaces. So the conditions of approval say that 34 parking spaces have to be set aside for those other five buildings. And then after you subtract those 34, the remaining parking spaces have to uh, meet the requirements for whatever uses go into the Atlas building. So every time a use came in under this master use permit, we would uh, do a calculation or we would require the applicant to provide us with data to show that the parking requirement uh, for retail or whatever it was, was met. And if it wasn't, we would not approve the, the use, use under okay. the master use permit. Good. Answers that. Uh, can we hear from the applicant? Hi, Larry Farb again, 27 Tamil Pius Road, Berkeley is my address. Um, I didn't come prepared with any remarks. I'm here to answer questions. I just would like to add that the property has been vacant for two years. It, is, it has become an eyesore because there's no user. There is virtually no industrial, um, we're the, virtually the only industrial zone left in the city of Emeryville. Um, there are no industrial businesses that want to relocate in Emeryville. So the use of the building is, is basically obsolete. And so the reason that it, it stays in its condition is that it's not rented. When it does become rented, it's obvious the building will be um, maintained much better and will not be uh, an eyesore as you describe it. I don't think it's an eyesore, well, but, but you I, describe it I, that I way. Didn't I don't disagree. That. You could. I mean, you, you promise. In other right. words, as you get tenants for the building, you will. Well, they will because they'll be paying a lot of rent. So I, I can't okay. imagine yeah. they would leave it in that in that condition. So the real, why, why we came here is to get a wider net of tenants so that we could um, get the building rented. There really is no effective way to rent the building. It would just be luck if we rented it. But the way it stands, the way this, the way this is falling out with the parking, as you um, picked up upon, is that there really is no change in the use because the increase in parking is so, it, they really can't change the use for more than a very small part of the building because the parking doesn't exist. For it. So in all practical purposes, the whole process here is almost moot. We could only um, add very little new uses to the building the way the parking stands unless we acquire more parking. So um, it's almost we're here almost like a, an exercise. There's really nothing that's changing in the building. And we're still going to be looking for industrial tenants because that's the only users that qualify without significantly more additional parking. 
So if you wanted to consider something, you should permit the uses without the parking. But I'm sure you're not here to do that. I think mm -hmm. we, we did a little back of the envelope calculation, and we don't have exact numbers, but if that vacant parcel on 66th Street were uh, made into a parking lot with tandem parking, kind of maxed out as much as you could get in there, and the uh, mezzanine space, office space, in the existing building were uh, decommissioned because uh, some of it is, most of it is not being used right now. About 7,000 square feet, I believe, is still in use, but the rest of it is not. So if you take that out, so that doesn't have a parking requirement anymore, uh, you know, block it off so you can't get to it. I think we figured that you could probably convert about half of the uh, 38,000 square feet on the ground floor to a retail use. Right. And if I might add one other thing, we had one tenant six months ago who was a, a furniture store, and he only sells expensive items, but would take the whole space. But when we explained we had to go for a hearing and it would take months and months, he basically dematerialized. So it's awkward to get new tenants when you don't have approvals or the ability to rent them the space. And, and continuing looking for an industrial tenant is, you know, we're just hoping, it's a hope plan, it's not, there's no certainty that we could um, get one. Can I ask you, have you talked to Semi Freddy's about their interest? I think in the, the realtors building? mentioned that they came through the property, but they were, I don't think they were interested in our okay. particular property. If there are no more questions of the applicant, we'll open the public hearing. Thank you. Is there anyone wishing to speak to this item? Seeing no one, we'll close the public hearing. Uh, discussion of commission? Ready to go? Yeah. Do we do we have a uh, motion? I'll move approval. Second. <laughs> because <laughs> things to You're do. Satisfied, Chris? Yes, okay. I am. I am. I am. I understand now. I understand now what he's trying to get at. Ready? Yeah, we're ready. Okay, on the motion to approve, Commissioner Germain. Yes. Commissioner Jeffrey. Aye. Commissioner Kane. Aye. Commissioner Lutz. Aye. Commissioner Owens? Aye. Vice Chair Martin? Aye. Six ayes. The application is approved. Thank you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> next item is Expression Center for New Media, uh, located at um, 16506065th Street. And Terry, I think you have this item as well. <laughs> Let me open the door. Oh, we do? Okay. <laughs> One of the, the supply grounds for your guitar. That is so oh, oh, listen. I love, yeah, I love these guys. I love these guys. Oh, yeah. I mean, we're so glad to have them here. They are and so cool. Hmm? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And why shouldn't we have a little pub? This is not a bar. This is going to be our neighborhood pub. We're going to hang out there. Yeah. Vice Chair Martin, Commissioners. Now, this is consideration of a conditional use permit to allow conversion of an existing office space to multimedia training and an, an instruction space. Now, the applicant is requesting a conditional use permit to allow the conversion of approximately 20,000 square feet of office space to multimedia training and instruction space. The expression for Center for New Media currently occupies approximately 62,000 square feet single-story structure situated to the west uh, of Shellmount Street and close to the intersection of um, 65th Street. The proposed uh, project would be required uh, to provide a minimum of 209 parking spaces and secure parking for 10 bicycles and 6 motorcycles. The project includes the use of existing, uh, an existing restroom space within leased space for the adjacent atrium building. Again, this project is categorically exempt under CEQA relating to the rules that apply to <coughs> minor alterations and the general rule that there is no possibility that the project would have a significant impact on the environment. The Expression Center for New Media is a multimedia education center that uses state-of-the-art education, sound, studio, visual, and digital graphic facilities in its instruction program. The school operates on a year-round basis, and classes are offered on a 24-hour-a-day uh, basis. Uh, the school currently occupies, as I say, 62,000 square feet 
at uh, 6601 Shell Mound Street, and now the school wishes to expand its inst instructional capacity by occupying 20,000 square feet of the adjacent atrium building. This is space that was formerly used as Sybase uh, office space. Again, no changes to the exterior of the structure of the atrium building are proposed as a result of this application. Now, we have uh, conducted a, um, a traffic study and parking demand study for this building some time ago. It was initially conducted in uh, 2002, and we've revisited the, that, that study recently. The earlier discussion with the uh, expressions in the year 2002 didn't go forward. So we revisited it, and uh, Fair and Peers have uh, recalibrated their study and uh, essentially come up with the uh, calculation that uh, 209 parking spaces would be needed in order to satisfy a demand that would be created by a maximum site population of 380. In other words, in looking at the study, we looked at uh, an expansion of students that went from uh, 298 up to uh, 482 in March, and then to a maximum total of 600. Okay. And also, that is true of staff that went to a maximum total population of 150. However, the key measurement of how many people are on site at any one time uh, was uh, calculated at uh, three, uh, 380. As a result of that, um, we have, um, as I say, come to the conclusion that parking spaces for uh, uh, 209 spaces would be, uh, would be necessary. Uh, this is arrived at uh, with a, a combination of events. Um, there are 77 off-site parking spaces within the Emory Bay part, uh, apartments that have uh, been leased by uh, Expressions. There are 39 spaces provided on site uh, within the uh, atrium building lease, and there are 93 spaces located at the existing expression center. So that all adds up to uh, 209 spaces in total. Uh, the general plan use classification for this uh, project is mixed use. That allows a variety of civic and commercial and industrial uses. In the mixed use zoning district, uh, conditional uses are allowed uh, under the zoning ordinance, civic, uh, comma, uh, community education. So in, in terms of findings, the proposed project would extend uh, multimedia training and instruction functions to an adjacent space. The proposed development would not expand the physical limits of the existing building and would not exceed, of course, the height limit for the area. The expanded instructional administ and administrative space would occupy space that was previously uh, used as office space. It would remodel that space and the proposed project would be required to meet the parking demand as calculated in the Fair and Peers study. Um, just briefly then, looking at the uh, drawings, this is the uh, existing facility for Expressions New Center for Media. Uh, Shell Mound Street would be over here, 65th Street would be in here. This then is the atrium building. This portion of the atrium building, colored in yellow, would be the 20,000 square feet, approximately 20,000 square feet, that would be leased to Expressions. The way that space would be divided up is shown on this drawing. By and large, it's uh, large areas of uh, classroom space, office space uh, along the walls and some in the, in the middle area, multi-purpose rooms located at this corner, and um, restroom facilities located here. Um, the uh, dotted lines that you see are uh, one-hour rated walls, and other walls indicated there are, are, would be constructed as part of the new leased space. The applicant again has provided uh, some photographs for us to look at. Again, no changes to the physical uh, exterior. Portions of the building are contemplated in this application. Um, in this particular photograph, looking uh, uh, to the southeast as you would step out of, of the expression uh, current uh, facility, you would see the portion of the building that they would occupy. Uh, I've drawn in red, a faint red line here, indicating um, the, the section of the building that would be occupied. Uh, however, uh, again, no changes to the exterior are, are planned. That is also indicated on this drawing here. Again, um, the uh, buildings, as you can see, by and large, are windowless and just have uh, entrance and uh, exit doors. So you're to if you look at different um, sections of the site, 
This is standing adjacent to the expressions uh, facility, which would be along this portion of this photograph. Looking towards the west, towards the bay, you'd capture that portion of the existing atrium building. No changes planned for that either. And if you took uh, a view of the atrium building standing at the junction, really, of where this driveway comes in and where the expression driveway is, this again would be the uh, building, that portion of the building that they would occupy. These doors here would remain in place. And these other drawings essentially show the same story, portions of the building that would be occupied by uh, the new um, space required by expressions. So I'll put this uh, drawing back up. And um, actually, that brings me to the end of my presentation. There are resolutions and conditions of approval attached to the staff report. Are there any questions to Terry? Uh, can we hear from the applicant? Is the applicant present? Betcha. Yes. Applicant is here. <laughs> Thank you for hearing us over here. We um, we worked very hard uh, about five or six years. We are, I mean, it's my seventh year in the city over here, and uh, we turned a warehouse really into a, the best school in the United States when it comes to that. We're the only program, bachelor program, when it comes to you get a bachelor's in two and a half years. So far, we have 1,300 students in the school. We graduated 631 up to date, and 80 plus percent have a job, and that's in these times, I think, miraculous. So. What we want to do to the atrium is kind of the same thing that we do to the atrium. I mean, change to the same thing. Nothing has changed. We'll be good boys. Um, our students come because they want to come, not because their parents want them to come. And that's quite a difference because when uh, problems arise, it's because they have to go to a school, right? Our students want to come to our school, and that's why it's also good. Thanks so much. Thank you. Um, Unless there are questions, of course. Are there any questions to the applicant? I'll uh, uh, then open the, hear uh, the public hearing. Is there anyone wishing to speak to this item? Seeing no one, we'll close the public hearing. Uh, discussion? I just want to thank you for occupying some of our vacant office space. <laughs> and also would like to say that I remember your original approval and we were all kind of leery as to whether or not it would even work and whether you could make it work and so I am glad to hear that I was wrong and that you are growing and I move approval. We have a second? A second. second. Oops. I think Patty got in there first. <laughs> <laughs> I'll second uh, Chris's uh, remarks then. Do we have a roll, Charlie? Uh, yes, that was moved by Commissioner Owen and seconded by Commissioner Jeffrey, was that right. what I heard? All right. Uh, on the motion, Commissioner Germain? Aye. Commissioner Jeffrey? Aye. Commissioner Kane? Aye. Commissioner Lutz? Aye. Commissioner Owens? Aye. Vice Chair Martin? Aye. Six ayes. The application is approved. And thank you for coming. We appreciate you being here in Emeryville. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, it's exciting there. Oh, oh, God. And they, they I mean. Uh, let's take a uh, five minute break. Yeah.